Hi and good morning. Uh, welcome to Intro to Astronomy and today we'll be talking about galaxies. Um, for the last, I believe maybe this is six weeks now, we've been covering um, a range of topics across um, astronomy and um, it's gonna be a fun ride today. So um, Yes, welcome to our class. So um, if you have not watched before, my name is Hannah Buckner and I'm one of the um, AmeriCorps educators here at the museum. And um, I enjoy teaching astronomy. So let's get started. Um, so what we talked about in the last class is that um, there are these objects in space called meteors and there's other ones called Asteroids, and so we talked about the difference between them and um, how meteor becomes, um, you know, a meteorite, um, and what does that really look like, and how does that impact us? And so um, that was really a cool thing to talk about because um, they do make up a good portion of our unit of our solar system, but um, they actually the total weight that they have or masses, I should say, is actually less than the Earth's moon. And so they are very small. They're remnants of the, the creation of our solar system. And so, um, yeah, that was what we talked about. So let's get started with today's class. So as I said, we're talking about galaxies. And these are quite important, actually, for us to be studying because um, they do impact us. They are um, actually quite important with um, making galaxies, um, stars. So what is a galaxy? A galaxy is simply a collection, not a collection, a concentration of stars, gas, gas dust, and dark matter that is all held together by gravity. Um, and they usually take a shape and they'll have a rotation. So galaxies are um, quite common in the universe um, and I mean, eventually they will die out um, into what is known as the dark era when everything will be dark and there will be black holes. But galaxies right now are the reigning champion of our universe. And so um, if you actually look at this picture, you'll see um, that there is a big galaxy. Well, it's not that it's big, but in respect to the camera, it is quite big. But then you also see that there's another galaxy over here, and then there's probably some that are back here that we can't necessarily see. Um, so yes, they are they are very common, um, and they exist in many different types, as I was saying. So there are spirals, there are ellipticals, and there are regulars, and those are the three main types. Um, there's also a type called ring galaxies, but they're not that common, um, and they actually um, we don't know how they form. They can form by um, possibly bar instability, which I can talk about what that means um, when we get to what a bar is. Um, but they can also form by collisions or, um, yeah, we just don't know. There's, we don't know. We don't know how they really they form. Um, so we can just think about it and um, make up a hypothesis that we can try to test. Um, which a hypothesis is a testable question that um, you come up with to be able to figure out any sort of problem or um, aspect about the world. Um, so, yeah. So a spiral galaxy um, is um, one of the more common types um, besides um, elliptical galaxies. Spiral galaxies, um, which our own is a spiral galaxy, they are flattened, rotating uh, galaxies that look like pinwheels, um, and their arms act like the pinwheels of the galaxies, and they're made up of interstellar matter, meaning it's got gut, mm -hmm, dust, gas, um, different stars. Um, the arms are typically made up of young stars, um, and then the bulge is made up of older stars. Um, so it is a mixture of old and new stars. There's two types of spiral classes. There's a barred and unbarred. So um, I guess you guys can't see my image, but I'll move it just in case you can. Um, so the 
right hand side of the pictures is a unbarred galaxy. And how we know that something is barred or not is actually um, quite easy. If you look at this bottom image, you'll see that there are maybe one, two, three, three main um, arms that are coming off of this little bar here. <laughs> and it's not a creative name. It literally is just that it looks like a bar or some people say it looks like a, a candy bar, which also kind of gives into that. Um, so they can separate into like how they, they, uh, they have their center. So um, when there are spiral galaxies, we'll, we'll say they're either unbarred or barred and there's like a special annotation that we use for that. Um, to say like, oh, this is this type of galaxy and um, be able to classify them without having to like see an image directly. Um, but no matter what type of spiral they are, all spirals will rotate. Um, and so as they're rotating, um, the direction of their spin actually makes it look like their arms are trailing behind. So like um, when there's a whirlpool in water, and like the the arms and waves that come out of it kind of like are not just when the where the whirlpool is it's actually like a little bit beyond that so that's what happens with when they spin and so that's actually how they get their pinwheel um look with their arms and so because their arms are looking like they're trailing and actually the most common type of spiral galaxy is a bar um, at least nearby um, and we do know that the Milky Way is a modest bar type, um, just from the way that we've been able to study it. Come on. There we go. So next are elliptical galaxies. Um, elliptical galaxies are um, a type of galaxy that has a shape that looks like an ellipse, or um, it looks like this. It could be a circle, or it can be like um, an oval. And they don't really contain any sort of visible interstellar matter that makes up the arms and spirals. Um, they're made up almost entirely of old stars and they can range from being a sphere to as flat as a pancake. Um, but typically we're seeing them as a sphere. Um, and all of the stars will orbit the center, but not necessarily in the same way that stars do in spiral galaxies. Um, kind of like how we talked about with the Oort cloud, how all of the comets and space matter that are out there, they're all orbiting the sun, but they're not all orbiting in the same direction. So that's actually what's happening with stars in elliptical galaxies. Um, you can actually see an elliptical galaxy right here. It's the big um, yellow looking ball in the upper left hand corner and it's very bright this um this galaxy but um it contains tons of stars and um all those stars are orbiting um that center of mass but they aren't all orbiting the same direction and so it can have that spherical shape um and they're not all one size. They can be very small to considered being considered a dwarf galaxy to very large. Um, and um, yeah, they don't just exist in those extremes. They can also be very much in between. Um, but yeah, these are um, a lot more common. Uh, well, not a lot more common. They're just as common as the um, spiral galaxies, but um, there is a hypothesis that, um, or I guess not a hypothesis, there is an idea that eventually um, all the spirals will end up as elliptical galaxies or irregular galaxies, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, and then eventually those will die away because they're not creating new stars, um, because these are all made up of older stars. Um, so irregular galaxies are the other type of galaxies. Um, they are galaxies that don't have any clear set of pattern or symmetry, which means that they um, look the same on all sides. Um, 
So really, it's neither a spiral nor an elliptical galaxy, um, which the definition is not necessarily completely accurate because there is another type of a galaxy called a ring galaxy. But um, like I said before, they, they're not that common. And so um, I, don't, I didn't think that we needed to talk about that. Um, so irregular galaxies actually have lower masses and are significantly dimmer than spiral galaxies. Sorry. And they contain old and new stars, but they, um, they don't necessarily look like galaxies um, if you're looking at a picture, um, if you're not really familiar with it. Um, one of the more top, more well-known um, irregular galaxies are the large and small Ma Magellanic clouds. Um, and they do create new stars. Um, a lot of stars have been known to form um, in those clouds. And um, they are just filled with gas and dust um, and dark matter, but um, they're not all within this orbiting shape. Um, they're just a cloud. And so that's what you're seeing with this here. This whole picture is an irregular galaxy. So you can see all the different little types of stars, the, the, the big red ones, the small cooler ones. Um, and those are those galaxies. Um, they are um, quite beautiful to look at. Um, when you're looking at those pictures, you can really see when you're looking at an image like this, they have all the different layers of the, of the light spectra um, being put into these images. And so you can actually see more depth um, in particular with the irreg irregular galaxies because um, they can be hard to see. So we have to look at them in all different types of light, um, meaning um, radio, x-ray, infrared, ultraviolet, and we put those together and we can really see an image like this where we can see all aspects of this galaxy, which we probably wouldn't be able to see in um, with our regular eye because um, they don't have this common shape of the elliptical galaxies and the spiral galaxies because they are not that bright. So I've been talking all about these galaxies and I've mentioned parts of them, but you know, we didn't really talk about like what are the parts of the galaxy. So when we're talking about um, an aspect of a galaxy, um, some of them are standard across the, the, you know, the two types that have shape. And then some of them don't, don't they only exist in one of them. So um, what you commonly see in um, a spiral galaxy and a uh, elliptical galaxy are the central bulge, also just known as the bulge. Um, you can't necessarily see it that well in this picture of the Sombrero galaxy from NASA, but um, if we go here, you'll be able to see it a little bit kind of better. It doesn't, because it's a flat image, you can't really see it, but um, if you actually see the Milky Way at night um, as it's stretching across the sky and there's like this one section that is like particularly bright and you can see some like dark gas and whatnot, um, that's actually the central bulge. And then um, it gives off a lot of light, but don't confuse it with the halo, which is number, number two on this. So the halo is really, it, it's just like the thought of what a halo is. It's like this, light behind something um, or like kind of like an aura. So that is what, where's my thing? That's what this whole like cloud is. Um, so the thing that isn't necessarily the, um, like the galaxy itself is the halo. Um, and actually there's this part of galaxies that isn't really a part of the galaxy, but they exist with galaxies are globular clusters or globular clusters. They're like small clusters of stars that kind of orbit around a galaxy. And you'll see them a lot more in the um, halo than in the disk um, because they're just easier to see. So they do exist in that galactic halo. And so um, we actually do call it the galactic halo because it differentiates between 
um, like the song Halo or um, just like talking about what a Halo is versus the um, the galactic or the galaxy like type of Halo that we talk about in astronomy. It makes it seem, it makes it so that everyone knows that we're talking about astronomy. And so when we're talking about a galactic disk, it, it's the same thing. So the disk that you'll see is um, number three. The Sombrero Galaxy has the perfect definition of a galactic disk. It looks like a Frisbee. Um, and you can really see that it has that like flatness um, going around and um, it's pretty clear that it's a disk. So when we're looking at a spiral galaxy, you know, it hits all of these points, the central bulge, the galactic halo, the galactic disk, but it actually only has, is the only kind of um, galaxy that has arms. So I thought we could go back and look at galaxies. I mean, a spiral galaxy. So you'll notice that um, elliptical galaxies don't have that same arm shape as spiral galaxies do, and that's because they simply only have the halo and the galactic, ha um, the galactic halo and the bulge. Um, so spiral galaxies have all of this, and they have the arms, which um, can stem out from the center or if it's a barred galaxy, they'll, it'll reach out from the ends of the bars. Um, and like I said, they only exist with spiral galaxies, thus making them spiral galaxies because the arms make the spirals. Um, so yeah, you'll only find the bulge and the galactic halo with the disc and the arms in a spiral galaxy and then an ellip an, a, yeah, an elliptical will only have the bulge and the halo. Um, and then in a regular galaxy, as we said, it doesn't have any specific shape or form. Um, it's just the collection of all that interstellar matter in just a space. Um, it's not orbiting in any specific way. It's not um, condensing into um, a rotating disk. Um, and so we, it doesn't have those aspects, um, which is cool in its own right. So how are, how, we talk about, you know, the collisions that they have um, and, you know, it, it can generate um, a new galaxy, but we commonly see that colliding spirals actually form irregular um, galax uh, galaxies that don't have any shape. Um, so how do they collide? Um, or why do they collide? So galaxies are relatively massive. They are very big. Um, they can be hundreds of and thousands of light years across. Um, and they are traveling at great speeds. And um, they are pretty close to each other in the grand scheme of the universe. Um, they all kind of cluster around each other. Um, we theorize that's because of dark matter or dark energy, which are matter and energy that we just can't detect. We don't know what it is. Um, so they are quite close to each other and they all kind of like travel along these highways. Um, and so as they collide, I mean, sometimes they can collide because they are so close to each other. Um, it's like if you're traveling on the road and um, there's a lot more people on the road than normal, and everyone is still traveling at, at big speeds. So um, the higher speed you're at, the more likely you are to have a crash, right? So that's what happens with galaxies. And so as they collide, they're actually passing through each other and then they distort and they warp each other. And um, they usually don't have the same shape that they have as they collided before, I mean, before they collided. Um, their stars don't crash into each other just because of the space between them, but because of the gas and dust that are in galaxies, that, that type of um, material that is optimal or perfect for generating stars, they collide and they create these collision, well, collisions, they create these eruptions that can generate new stars. Um, or they can also um, make stars explode and um, you'll have supernovas or maybe even black holes. And so um, 
they collide because of the the massive gravitational um, pull that they both experience towards each other because they are so massive. And so um, as they're colliding, they um, are warping each other because of the gal of the the the, the sheer amount of gravity that they're experiencing, but also just because they are interacting with each other. And so um, we're actually going to see that the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy are going to collide in 4 billion years. There's no way we can avoid it. Um, they are in a direct hit path. And um, the super massive galaxy that's going to form is not going to, is probably not going to be a spiral galaxy. Um, and it may not last that long because there's just going to be such a sheer amount of matter in that galaxy. Um, and uh, if the <laughs> black holes in the centers of these two galaxies um, merge, <laughs> they're going to have even greater um, gravity to deal with than pulling in stars. Um, so it's probably going to form an irregular galaxy or possibly an elliptical um, or maybe even a type of galaxy that we haven't seen yet. So that will be interesting to see. I mean, obviously we won't see it, but um, it's definitely an interesting aspect. And we can know what it's going to look like because we have seen galaxies colliding like this one here. Um, we can study and have an, an idea of what's going to happen and um, be able to guess about whether or not like that is common or um, like the results that happen um, what is typical across the board or is it just a, a game of chance so um, it it really just depends on what we see so um, it's definitely something really interesting to talk about because it can be such um, an important thing that forms with creating stars, supernovas, black holes, um, new types of galaxies. Um, like, I, like when I was talking about ring galaxies, um, the collision of um, galaxies actually is thought to be a possibility of what creates ring galaxies because um, there's a separation between the arms and the center of that galaxy. And so there, it literally looks like there's a dot inside a ring. Um, so there's so much potential when stars, when galaxies collide. Um, and we're seeing that as they evolve, collisions are actually going to happen more often than not. And then eventually we'll end up with um, galaxies that won't be able to make more stars and then eventually they'll die out, probably. Um, so that's how they collide. Um, Speaking of our Milky Way and colliding with Andromeda, I thought we could talk about our own place. So the Milky Way, if you didn't know, is the galaxy in which we live. We um, are kind of on the outer banks of the Milky Way and um, our Milky Way is just full of stars and you can see it at night and it's so pretty. You can see it and be like, Oh my gosh, there are thousands of stars that are in this Milky Way, and that's part of our neighborhood. Um, we may not be able to interact with them, but they are within that neighborhood. And it, at least for me, it makes me feel like, oh, I'm home. I mean, not that I've ever left the Milky Way. But anyway, the Milky Way, um, I may have mentioned before, is a modest spiral galaxy. So um, it's not completely where, um, the bar is the main part of the Milky Way. And then like, there's just like a couple of spirals. That's the most extreme. Um, our galaxy is a barred galaxy with about four main, um, well, four major arms. Um, so, well, not major. So there's two major arms and two minor arms. And then there are like little things that come out of them, which we can call spurs. So um, you'll see that there are four. There's the Scutum Centaurus arm, which is um, over here, and it goes all the way out from the bar, um, coming off of the long bar. 
and then the Sagittarius arm, which is the other major arm, comes out from the galactic bar, which is the other side, and it stretches all the way out. And then between, um, sorry, not, uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's the Perseus arm, sorry, not the Sagittarius arm, um, and I'm just realizing that I misspelled Perseus. Um, so yeah, the Perseus and Scutum Centaurus arms are the major ones, and then the minor mar um, arms are the Sagittarius arm, which are, it's right here between um, kind of the bar and the Perseus arm. And then the Norma arm is um, on the other side. And so there's also the Orion Spur, which is where we are, we're between um, the Sagittarius arm and the Perseus arm, and we're in a pretty safe neighborhood. Um, these arms are great places for collisions between stars and explosions, um, and so it can be a relatively volatile place to live. Um, we're in a pretty stable area where um, we are around other stars, but we're not that close to them where we are going to experience some sort of chaos or unrest because of all the other stars near us. Um, and then there's um, just other little pockets that are kind of like spurs, but they don't necessarily have names and they just come out and that makes up our Milky Way. Um, so the Orion Spur is, um, it comes off of these arms and um, it's possible that there are other solar systems like our own that exist in these pockets of peace, so to say. Um, and um, the only time that will probably change is <laughs> when we collide with the Andromeda galaxy. So um, our spiral galaxy is our home and it experiences all the other things that spiral galaxies experience, which is um, rotating and spinning and then the arms look like they're trailing because of the spin that we experience. Um, and all of our older stars are in the bar of the galaxy, and that's actually where um, the, um, the black hole that is at the center of our galaxy um, is called Sagittarius A, like asterisk. Um, and so we're all orbiting around that. Um, don't worry, we're safe. Um, the possibility of coming near that is quite low. Um, but this is our Milky Way, and um, it is one of the more common type of um, more common types of galaxies. And isn't it good to know where we are? So um, that was milk. Uh, that was galaxies and the three types that galaxies that there are. Um, if you have any questions um, about the presentation or about the handouts that will be up um, within the day, um, please feel free to reach out to me at hbuckner at fairbanksmuseum.org. And thank you so much for watching. So um, I hope you have a great day and uh, enjoy being home. Thank you.